Cinematic Platformers, one of the classic genres that started with George Imagineer's Prince of Persia game in 1989. The game that got ported to the PC in 1990 and managed to become one of the best DOS games of the era. A game that is fondly remembered for its fluid rotoscoped animation and art style. Never before had PC games looked and played this good, and consoles wanted the taste of the action too. So Prince of Persia was ported to almost any system under the sun. Well, not literally, but a fair few of them anyway. Its success inspired other developers to create games with a similar approach. The two games I'm going to take a look at today are Flashback from Delphine Software on the SNES and the Sega Mega Drive, and Black Hawk, also known as Blackthorn, on the SNES and the PC. The PC version I have covered in a previous video about two years ago. Save yourself while there is still time. Could it be? Are you the chosen one? Oh, is that like the guardian in the tribe? Ugh. Boom! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! Oh shit! Bloody confusing controls! Flashback came out in 1993 and was developed for the Amiga and the Mega Drive in particular. The Amiga version came out first, but the game was developed with the Mega Drive in mind. The game was soon ported to other platforms such as MS-DOS, the SNES, the Sega CD, 3DO and many more. It was even released on the Philips CDI and the Econ Archimedes a bit later. The list of platforms it came out on is exhaustive. Flashback is a high concept game that takes place in a futuristic dystopian world. Fusing many influences from Philip K. Dix's stories such as Total Recall, George Orwell's 1984, with stylistic influences from Blade Runner thrown in as well. The game's story and art style takes bits and pieces from all of them and blends them nicely together. The game redefined the concept of the cinematic platform, introduced many new elements and has a very solid delivery. Even 30 years later this game still feels fresh and modern, it was ahead of its time and it is a timeless classic. Black Hawk, that's its European PAL region name, of Blackthorn was released in 1994 and was developed by Blizzard and published by Interplay. Yes, it's that Blizzard! This was one of their earliest games. Before World of Warcraft they made the Lost Vikings and also this game. Black Hawk has a very different style than Flashback, but it has many things in common with it in terms of game design. It's just presented differently, but it borrows, or should I say rips off, a lot from Flashback, yet failing to improve upon it. Blackhawk's style is set in the dark world of the planet Tool, which has a future leadership problem. It all revolves a ruler with two sons, but he can't choose which one of the two sons will be his successor. The story is a bit convoluted, but each son gets his own kingdom. It involves a light stone and a dark stone, representing the good and the evil. The protagonist of the game is called Kyle, and he is a military leader representing the king of the Lightstone's kingdom's people. He is to fight Sarlacc, who is the leader of the evil Darkstone kingdom, who has subjected the people of the good Lightstone kingdom. It's a very long and complicated story indeed. Going back to Flashback, this game's story revolves an agent called Conrad. Set in the year 2142, he discovers that shapeshifting aliens, known as Morphs, have infiltrated the human society. He records a message to himself, and his memory is later erased when the aliens find out that he is investigating them. This is a direct influence from the likes of Total Recall. Conrad manages to escape but crash lands in a jungle and finds his way back to New Washington where his memory is restored. Here he's got to get false papers in order to travel back to Earth by winning a life or death fight in a TV show called Death Tower. In the SNES version this is called Cyber Tower because of Nintendo's censorship. Once back on Earth he investigates a club to uncover the aliens' plans. He gets captured and has to escape prison only to then teleport to the aliens' lair. 
Eventually he's got to fight the master brain and destroy the planet's core by detonating a nuclear charge. He escapes on a pot, staying in suspended animation until the sequel Fade to Black from 1995. One of the principal differences with Prince of Persia is the use of inventory items to solve puzzles and the style of combat. The combat is quite smooth and Conrad can fire a gun, but so do most of his opponents. However, gun combat is not the only way to defeat enemies. Conrad can also lure them by throwing a rock at them to grab their attention. A quick roll down from a platform above and Conrad can take out the enemy from the back with his gun. He can also lure them into environmental traps to defeat them. It works really well. Compared to Prince of Persia, the controls are much smoother, much more responsive and are very snappy. The default controls are laid out really well too. They are very intuitive and make sense to me. The running jump is also a lot more reliable and there's even a move to clear really large gaps. By running towards it and letting go of the direction button just before the gap, making Conrad automatically jump and grab onto a ledge. This works really well and it's sadly missing in Blackhawk. Aside from this, Conrad can use a variety of inventory items such as an anti-gravity belt in the first stage and teleportation devices in later levels. He's also got to use various keys that he obtains from defeating certain enemies to open doors. A notable item is the force field which Conrad can use to shield against enemy fire. During the game Conrad can also obtain credits, this is money, to achieve certain goals in order to proceed in the game. Flashback has a good amount of environmental puzzles and traps such as switch activated lifts, mines and laser cannons. Some of these can also be deadly but can also be used against enemies. Every stage has a save point where you can save your progress. Blackhawk on the other hand has a much stronger focus on combat and it even has a cover system where you can hide in the shadows. But some of the enemies can do this too. The weapon of choice is a shotgun, which is quite slow in the first level. It can fire in two directions, a forwards and backwards. Each direction has its own dedicated button assigned to it which requires some getting used to. This is also one of the main criticisms I have with this game. The controls are not very intuitive. It's made even worse by the fact that you cannot change the layout unlike flashback. I always get the forwards and backwards buttons confused and mixed up, simply because of how they are assigned to the action buttons. Not logical! Another type of weapon is the hoover bomb. You can use these to destroy doors and enemies. A third type of weapon is the wasp, a remote controlled bomb which is useful for destroying force fields that are in your way. I don't know if there are any other weapons, since I didn't get much further than the first stage of the second area in the game. Yes, the game is that hard. Like Flashback, Blackhawk has lifts and bridges that are powered by generators, usually requiring a key to activate these. There are also environmental traps as well. A neat and original touch to the game are the secret passages behind certain waterfalls in the first stage. Some areas also require a levitation device in order to reach them. A nice touch is that the game has a practice level with NPCs that explain you the controls. Those NPCs are typically prisoners that give you hints and objects during the game. But these prisoners can also be killed by either you or the guards, so be careful. The game's design takes a lot of inspiration from flashback and concept, but its art style is vastly different. Both games have a password system to allow you to return to later levels. The passwords are quite short, which is nice. In the case of flashback, the passwords are coupled with a difficulty setting, so if you play the game on easy, the passwords are different from the normal or hard modes. What I like about flashback as opposed to Blackhawk is the options screen. You can actually choose between three different difficulty settings and also choose between three different control layout options. Blackhawk gives you none of that, such a shame. Flashback's easy difficulty makes the game quite balanced and manageable. I was able to beat it on the SNES and the Mega Drive. The levels have checkpoints, the safe switches. They are very welcome in the longer stages of the game. This in particular lowers the frustration level. Blackhawk's approach to this is slightly different. Here each area is divided in sub-levels, each with its own password which is a good solution too. However I feel Blackhawk is flawed in some ways. So let's break down the good and bad points of both games.
Graphics and presentation. Bald games have nice graphics that portray a certain mood and have a very distinct style to them. Flashback looks identical on the SNES and the Mega Drive. The graphics are straight from the Amiga version. I'd say they're almost indistinguishable. Only notable difference is that Conrad's shirt is red in the SNES version and it's white in the Amiga and Mega Drive versions. Flashback style is very much made with the Mega Drive and Amiga in mind in regards of color palette capabilities and limitations. Yet it manages to deliver a lot of variety in environments. The SNES version does not really take much advantage of the system's expanded color capabilities. However, I don't find that to be much of an issue. The intro and the cutscenes do a very good job of telling the story in a very cinematic way. It's high concept. Blackhawk's style is very dark, both in theme and color use. I dig it. But it's not as varied as Flashback. It's detailed nonetheless, and the animations are quite good. The only nitpick that I have with this game is that some enemies, like the little spiders in the later part of the first area, kind of blend in with the background, making them hard to see. I can't really find too much to complain really. It's good, but a bit boring. Sound. Prince of Persia didn't have much music. It only had the title theme and a few short audio cues. Flashback continues in that fine tradition, but it has some nice musical content in the cutscenes. The intro tune on the Amiga version is the best. And it is very atmospheric. The Mega Drive version uses the Gems audio driver, but it's used effectively here. The SNES version does a reasonable job at the sound. Although it is missing a few bits and pieces. The sound is typical SNES fare with hollow reverb effects. Blackhawk shows that in-game music isn't always a must. The music of Blackhawk is very boring and the compositions are very uninspiring. The tune of the first area in particular doesn't do the game justice and sets a very boring mood. It just really brings the game down. The atmosphere, yeah it is there but it's just, well, a little bit boring I think. The second area has a much nicer tune. I guess the musical style is typical of North American developed games. It's like the music in a lot of DOS games, it's a bit bland. Contrast that to Flashback, which has some really nice and creative arrangements in its musical themes. Controls. Flashback controls really good and intuitively. On the Mega Drive it's just perfect. You use the A button to shoot and jump and interact with objects, the B button to use an inventory item and the C button to draw your gun. The start button is used to bring up the inventory menu. It's all nice and simple. I like it a lot. On the SNES the respective buttons are Y, B, A and select. So the Y button is your main action button. It's laid out the same way. Also in both versions the controls are very responsive and snappy. It just controls really well. Now Blackhawk's controls could have been better. They are not bad per se, but they are flawed in comparison. The running jump is not as snappy and sometimes fails which is annoying. It's no better than Prince of Persia in that regard. Also what I really hate is the slow animations of the character when you are drawing your gun. Conrad's animations in flashback are a lot quicker by comparison. Blackhawk's biggest problem is the lack of simplicity. I've had this issue with the Lost Vikings as well. It's just a bit too complicated for its own good. Why have two shoot buttons? Why is the Y button used for shooting backwards? In flashback that is the primary action button. But in Blackhawk the developers decided to assign the forward shoot action, the important action, to the B button. That to me makes no sense. It's annoying to get used to and you can't change it. Fun factor! Bottom line, I like Flashback a lot. I've completed it although on easy difficulty. Blackhawk on the other hand is ok, but I still find it hard to get into. I really want to like this game, but it has a few annoying flaws that make it not as memorable as Flashback. It fails to exceed it, even though it was released about a year later. With a few tweaks, Blackhawk could have been just as good as Flashback, but it sadly just isn't and it kinda failed. Well, what about the story then? Well, Flashback's story is very strong. It's definitely one of the better written games and it takes inspiration from some very classic movies and books. The way it is explained in the game with the cutscenes and how it is incorporated with the core gameplay is just brilliant. Blackhawk's story is forgettable, it's a bit generic and slightly uninspiring. Well, what can I say? Both games are decent, but Flashback is clearly the better game. It's a timeless classic, yet Blackhawk was very good for the time it came out, but it has not aged as gracefully as Flashback. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye bye!